Welcome to the EDB podcast, the official podcast of the European Academy of Dermatology and Virology. I'm Daniel. And I'm Adriana. And we are your hosts. Every month, the JADV chooses and highlights four articles in a section called Editor's Picks. Today, we explore the Editor's Picks for May 2023. Our four topics are Melanoma Prognosis and Solar Elastosis, Exploring Systemic Allergic Reactions Following Aluminium Exposure, Dose deferral of monoclonal antibody may still be effective in atopic dermatitis. Emollients go first. But before we get into that... Get ready to experience cutting-edge science and innovation in dermatology and virology at the upcoming EDV Congress in Berlin, Germany, 11th to 14th of October 2023. The ADV Congress is one of the largest and prestigious international gatherings dedicated to dermatology and virology, providing a platform for the brightest minds in research, clinicians, and top industry professionals to come together and share knowledge, make connections, and foster scientific collaboration. The diverse CME-accredited interactive program covering the full AZ of hot topics also includes innovative, hands-on workshops, subspecialty sessions, and industry sessions. The exhibition hall will provide opportunities for attendees to explore the latest technologies, treatments, and products in the field to date. The wait is over. Tickets to attend the Congress in Berlin are on sale now. Be sure to check edvcongress2023.org to learn how to participate and for more information about the event. And now, the editor's picks. Melanoma prognosis and solar elastosis. As we move into sunnier months in much of Europe, it is timely to focus on the role of sun exposure in causing melanoma. As we see in a letter to the editor this month, it can also be prognostic for survival. Breslow's depth and the presence of ulceration have been reported to be the strongest predictors of melanoma prognosis. However, the relationship between the chronic sun damage of solar elastosis and prognosis for patients with melanoma has been unclear to date. To investigate this, Chang et al. conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis, including a sensitivity analysis, ultimately including seven cohort studies with over 5,000 patients. Their findings suggest that not only evaluating collagen deposition and single melanoma cells at the invasive front, but also the status of solar elastosis in the tumour-adjacent dermis could be useful in predicting the prognosis of primary cutaneous melanoma. Solar elastosis in the tumour-adjacent dermis correlates with better melanoma-specific survival. Therefore, the authors recommend that solar elastosis be included in histopathological reports, and they also advocate for consensus in solar elastosis grading. Exploring systemic allergic reactions following aluminium exposure. Systemic contact dermatitis occurs by sensitization through skin exposure and the development of systemic eczematose eruption in response to the same allergen and may occur in individuals who are allergic to metals, medications, or foods. We know that metals may cause cutaneous eruptions, including the baboon syndrome, following systemic exposure. This has not been systemically investigated with aluminium and granulomatose skin reactions. In a three-week, blinded, randomized, controlled, crossover, oral aluminium placebo provocation study by Hoffman and colleagues, 15 aluminium-allergic children were included who have been referred to itching granulomas following immunization with aluminium-absorbed vaccines. A total of three children developed unspecific cutaneous eruptions following enhanced aluminium exposure through food, an indication of systemic allergic dermatitis, which resolved after a few days. The authors suggest that cutaneous reactions following increased oral aluminium intake may occur in a minority of children. The study may have been underpowered, therefore, further confirmation studies are needed. Dose deferral of a monoclonal antibody may still be effective in atopic dermatitis. Dupilumab, an interleukin-13 and interleukin-4 receptor inhibitor, has shown excellent results in the treatment of atopic dermatitis, asthma and nasal polyps. While it is approved for dosing every 14 days, Its efficacy appears to extend past this time frame in some populations, for example children. Masterino and colleagues retrospectively assessed safety and maintenance of response among patients with atopic dermatitis who are taking dupilumab every 3-4 to weeks and found that 29 out of 451 patients, approximately 6%, were on this deferred regimen. They found that therapeutic dose deferral of dupilumab may be a suitable option in atopic patients with complete or almost complete and stable response at treatment in terms of the following. Reduction of possible dose-related side effects. Increased therapeutic compliance by reducing the number of injections needed. Reduction of possible injection-related distress effects, particularly in patients who are sensitive or belenophobic, afraid of needles, 
and progressive savings in therapeutic expenditure. Prospective studies may help to confirm this. Emollients go first. The sequential use of topical corticosteroid, TCS, and emollients can be challenging to patients with inflammatory dermatosis, and recommendations can be conflictual for clinicians. Vehicle formats, such as creams, lotions, and ointments, are not distinct indications of psychochemical product properties and their vehicle ingredients. Therefore, their effect is not predictable. Surbin and colleagues found that when TCS was applied first, a hydrophilic emollient was unable to dissolve the ingredients of the lipophilic TCS vehicle. A surprising result was that a well-absorbed, dried-up product could be redissolved after 30 minutes by subsequently applied product, underlying the significance of the psychochemical properties of the vehicle ingredients like polarity and solubility. As the composition of products as well as the psychochemical properties of vehicle ingredients are rarely known, the authors recommend to first apply product that is to be used over larger areas and only then the one to be used over smaller area, for example, emollient followed by TCS. This also applies to other products such as decorative cosmetics and some protection products. Our first article was Solar Elastosis and Melanoma Specific Survival, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis by Chang and co-authors. Our second article was Adverse Reactions After Oral Provocation with Aluminium in Children with Vaccination Granulomas and Aluminium Contact Allergy by Hoffman and co-authors. Our third article was Dose Reduction of Dupilumab in Atopic Patients with Controlled Atopic Dermatitis, a Safe and Effective Practice, by Masterino and co-authors. Our fourth article was Topical Corticosteroid or Emollient Product, Which to Apply First, by Serba and co-authors. Of course, all of the research presented today can be found in the Journal of the European Academy of Dermatology and Virology. Though you can find free access and open articles, EDB members benefit greatly by having access to all articles and content. We would like to give a special thank you to all of our listeners. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify or otherwise find us on any major podcast provider. We appreciate you joining us and look forward to presenting more interviews, research and other topics of merit. Before you go, a quick favour. If you are a regular listener to our podcast, we would love to hear from you. Your feedback will help us improve the show and develop episodes that you are interested in hearing. To participate in the short survey, simply follow the link in the show notes of this episode. Thank you for your support. It means a lot. We look forward to hearing from you. Until the next episode, take care of your skin.